Hello everyone, now here we are, welcome back to Run It Up. Uh, sorry, sorry, the mic was messed up. Sorry. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> Mike's ready to go now, here we go, sorry about that. But yes, welcome back to Run It Up, Run It Up number 25. As you can see, we've done some remodeling. We've got ourselves a new uh, casting home here. I mean, it's the same casting home, just a little bit nicer of a casting home. So we got ourselves run it up. We got ourselves a starting bankroll. I got a little whiteboard. When I get angry, I need to write some notes. Got some stuff behind me that I'll show you guys tomorrow. And uh, and yeah, so there's plenty plenty of cool stuff here. Tomorrow will actually be a kind of an announcement. This is kind of like a little tease preview thing going on. We're going to play some 25 cent, 50 cent, uh, two tables. I started today with, how much did I start with today? Oh, that's right. One hundred sixty dollars and fifty-seven cents. Can't mess it up. Who needs annotations anymore when you just have whiteboards, right? So uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna just get started. Let's uh, let's get this rolling. So I'm in for both tables for twenty-five dollars. So uh, I have fifty dollars of our hundred sixty on the line right now. Not the best, perhaps, for bankroll management, but uh, you know, hey, we don't really worry about that around here. So we <laughs> just let it happen. We gotta run it up somehow, right? You can't run it up low stakes. Hello. All right, so. I also decided to play a $10 tournament, which I recorded separately, which uh, we might do another time. We'll, you know, we'll see. But today we're just playing these two tables of cash. Raising a 6-4 offsuit here on the button with uh, 50 big blinds or so. Don't know any of these opponents. Don't think we played anybody before. Gonna bet here, of course, with a gut shot. 101 dealer. That's right. There'll be some 101 in here. It's 25 cent, 50 cent. It's our stake level. We can raise to 101 every time. <laughs> they don't even know. What are they going to do? So uh, against a guy I've never really played too much before, I think it's close between betting and checking on the turn here. Uh, I decided to bet twice thinking maybe he'll fold a hand like a four. Maybe he'll fold like an ace high hand right now. Um, but you know, I, I don't think he's folding an eight or better. So that's why it's kind of close. Thankfully, we just fucking drill it on the river here, and uh, river the nuts, and I would have barreled a lot of river cards, not necessarily like kings or eights, but I would have barreled a lot of river cards, and I'm certainly obviously betting a five as well, but uh, I think six dollars might be a little bit on the big side, to be honest, but uh, yes, this is an earlier session, uh, this play this is from yesterday, so I bet, 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 and he ends up folding. Yes, yeah, so I am back in Las Vegas. This is not my hotel room. This would be a sick hotel room, though, if they were just like, yes, here's your hotel room, sir. Um, but yes, no, I'm back in Las Vegas. I went to San Francisco and L.A. Did a little California trip. I drove, actually, from San Francisco to L.A. and then L.A. back to here, which was uh, something I had never done before. Uh, a lot, that was a lot of driving, but uh, it was interesting. I got to see a lot of... Oh, hi. Oh, hi there. All right. So we raised ace queen, gonna fire out a bet here at least once. I think four dollars gets a trick, does a trick most most of the time. Turn ace is interesting. I think uh, it's very close between like check raising all in, betting small, betting a lot. Like I think there's a lot of different decisions here that are all relatively close, but I'm not really sure what the best one is because I don't really know our opponent that well. So just picking up by default, I thought it'd be better to bet and uh, and obviously not fold because we're putting so much money of our, of our money in there. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's very close between all the options, and it really just kind of depends. So he shoves, and we're not happy about it, but too often he has something that we're just, you know, ahead of. So in this case, he has Ace Jack. Get out of here. Get out of here with your Ace Jack. <laughs> so we, uh, we do ship that there. 20 plus $25 already. Running it up. How long is it going to be today? We're going to be streaming for about an hour today. This is like an hour long, about an hour long session. And we'll answer all the questions at the end. So it'll probably be a little bit more than an hour. So I raised here with 4 nines through on the button. I think that's pretty normal. On the left table, it was just a limp spot pre-flop. And then we just checked it around every single street. Where's the badge? There. <laughs> it's behind, behind the mic, but it's there. Don't worry. Don't worry, I would not leave the house without my sheriff badge, right? Let's be real. Don't worry, I know, I know. <laughs> Trevor Pope here. Yes, of course. Gonna raise it up with Queen Jack suit on the button here. Obviously, raising up quite a lot, so... Certainly raising Queen Jack suited. Flop top bear, which is always sweet. If he checks, we're gonna bet. Probably like a dollar and a quarter, a dollar fifty, depending on if I'm being lazy or not. 
dollar is also fine. Can't really go, can't really go too wrong with any of those. So I do about dollar fifty. I think that is fine. Hope you guys have been enjoying the uh, the life <laughs> the life life and times of Jay Carver series I've been doing. That's you know I have all the information, so I might as well do it. I have all these like beautiful graphs and pictures, and you know I hope you guys have been enjoying that. So that's been that's been fun too. A little cooler on the left table here, kings versus threes. Don't worry, I, I'm not going to make you pick me or Breaking Bad. <laughs> I would pick Breaking Bad too. <laughs> don't don't worry about that. So yeah, so we're playing a little bit over our bankroll here, obviously, because we only had 160. Wait, what did we have to start today? Oh, 160 dollars and 57 cents. So, given that we only had that, we were in for 25 on each table. We really shouldn't be taking like super high variant spots. Like, I think I should actually be calling here on the right table and not re-raising, given that this 50 dollars represents a quarter <laughs> of our bankroll. But uh, I did that case, so I think it's okay. I think we just need to kind of be slightly aware of that. So. Uh how I like shooting at the range? Am I going to shoot again? Well, I really enjoy shooting with, I mean, it's, I never shot a pistol before and getting to shoot a pistol by, you know, being taught by top shot champion Chris Chang was like unbelievable. Like, how cool is that? Uh, I met Chris at a charity event and uh, he was nice enough to, to let me know when he was in Vegas and said, if you, want, if you want to do anything, either poker or shooting, let me know. And I was like, let's do both of those on camera. And then I threw Dan O'Brien in the mix and there you go. You got yourself a video, right? So, uh, so yeah, that was awesome. I mean, one of those like really cool random perks of doing YouTube videos, I guess, is that I could do cool things like that. So uh, I'm glad that you guys, uh, Husky Mudkips in the chat, the legendary hero, Husky Mudkips, my YouTube idol, that is it. Husky Mudkips taught me the lesson of if you want something bad enough and you work hard enough, you will eventually get close to getting it or massively, massively exceed expectations in his case. <laughs> what is it? How? He builds so much. He's got like 400 million followers, I think, on uh, subscribers on YouTube now. Unbelievable. But uh, yeah, we're all just living life trying to be like Husky Mudkips over here. It's true. It's not even a joke. <laughs> it's true. All right, Pocket Jacks here. This guy I think posted. I don't know why this camera is all of a sudden so out of size here. I can't believe nobody said anything. We didn't even know this was a player there until right now. He might have just got, he might have just sat down, I guess. But sorry about that. So I raise it up. Goes fold, fold. Nothing exciting there. Ah, uh, yes it is. Yes it is. When will brace the hunting return? Probably sometime around never. <laughs> brace the hunting man, that was that was like the best idea that just like it was so hard to do during the World Series because there's so many other things I had to do and having to spend so much time doing that and there were so many restrictions at like what we could film, what we couldn't film at the Rio and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do uh, videos with that crew very soon again because that crew was awesome and as you guys saw the quality of those videos was unbelievable so we're gonna do videos again it's just gonna be uh, it will not be titled bracelet hunting it will be something else but I actually think I kinda like the idea of just naming almost all my videos run it up like you know because my whole life has been running it up right so why not call everything run it up and then just do like run it up story time run it up and then have the bankroll challenge as a part of run it up just have run it up be like all the videos or almost all the videos. What do you guys think about that? Hate that, says someone that I know but don't know who it is. <laughs> I don't know who it is, I know, I know. Am I gonna play W Coop? Uh, no, I'm not gonna play W Coop. That, it, the binds are just too small. The binds are just too small, and then you have to be in Canada for like three weeks, and I can't do any of those things anymore. I'm too old for all that. Oh yeah, I remember this hand on the left here. This is a. Uh, this is a one. <laughs> this is one of those Jay Carver special hands here. So, uh, oh, did we skip the hand where I just like shipped it in the guy's face on the right? I think we missed that hand, but <laughs> that was a good one. I like that hand. Uh, we're gonna have to go back and rewind that, maybe for YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube later, because I will be reposting these on YouTube, so uh, you'll have a chance to rewind and go check that out. So I bet this flop, which is not something that I would always do. And then I turn a straight draw, which makes me feel like I might want to try to bet one more time. Or at least try to bet small, because I don't want to just check fold. And if I bet, maybe there's a chance he folds like a6, or like maybe he has a hand as weak as like two sevens once in a while. Or maybe he even folds a hand like, I don't know, maybe he folds like a weak queen or a bad king once in a while. I mean, I doubt any of those things will happen, but maybe. 
why not? <laughs> There's no no guarantees. So I, I think betting 350 to win $10 works often enough, and also we have enough equity when we're called, but it's got to be close to fine. Um, not something that I always do, but and on this river, I think I just give up. I just think there's too many things. Like, I, I don't know this player well enough to know if I can pressure him off here with like a big bet, so I ultimately think I just give up, but maybe I bet. <laughs> the slow click drag as I'm like debating. I don't think I bet here. I, I think I end up giving up, but... Uh, <laughs> I had no idea. I was as mesmerized as you guys were. I did not did not know that. Uh, yes, the queen four shove. The queen four shove was weird because the guy posted under the gun, and then I raised in the big blind, and then he re-raised, and it was just like, what are you doing? Like, you know, come on, what are you claiming to do here? He's post. He's he's like limp trapping under the gun, like post trapping. I I don't buy it. <laughs> I'm not a believer. I am not a believer here. Let's see some of these questions. There is a lot of questions. Yeah, well, uh, FSU420 says I should keep the bankroll challenge name, run it up, and then name everything else something else. I was going to do the J. Carver Daily thing as a thing. Uh, that was going to be the name of the show, but I don't know if I like that as much as run it up. I kind of like run it up as the thing, you know? But we'll discuss, you know? I'm open to, I'm open to suggestions and feedback. So hopefully I move this table out of the way eventually because I actually record that table separately. So yes, thank you. A7 suited here. Let's see a flop dealer. Let's see three, huh? Your question is too long. Your question is quite long, sir, but I will answer it nonetheless. Can I please discuss my pre-flop raise size decisions in the shorthanded 510 game? Am I randomizing? Uh, I don't really think I actually make any like clear decisions in that video i'm pretty sure i'm just like i'm raising deeper i'm raising bigger when we're deeper and then just sometimes trying different things and seeing what happens i'm a big fan of just trying it you know, just try it what's the worst that could happen you know i i'm a big fan of like testing your opponents and seeing what do they do to a min raise what do they do to two and a half x what do they do to a four x what do they do to especially if you're going to play like a longer deep match i think it's important to kind of test your opponent like that so i don't really have like a oh i raise 2.5 x when this happens or whatever i like testing your opponent and seeing what they do from it so yes i just have the one ultimate poker account like everyone else should have on the site <laughs> yes that is that uh so this is a weird hand where I probably messed this hand up at some point. Uh, I I don't even I think preflop went min raise and I called in the big blind and then I think flop. Uh, I think I might have just check called the flop or something, but I don't remember her action to be honest with you. So because I was talking about the other answer, but uh, I, ultimately I think we're just beat here too often. I think about maybe check raising all in because I don't think this guy ever has like a full house, but I don't think people can fold flushes at this level, so I, I think ultimately folding is just best. Calling is also okay. We're getting a great price, but we only really beat like King Queen, Queen 10, you know, hands that are going to try to bluff like 10-9 maybe we beat every once in a while. Like there are some hands we beat, but there's probably not, we probably don't win that often enough, but don't really know our opponent that well. I, I think it's I think it's a close a close fold. Let's see, what other questions did I not get to? How do you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so king queen here in the small blind. I think re raising is okay also, but I think calling is fine given that we're all we're both a little bit shorter and we're trying to minimize variance slightly. Given that this is a combined, now this is $85 of our starting bankroll. What was our starting bankroll? That's right, <laughs> $160.57. That is a pretty good flop for the king queen offsuit when it just comes the the ace jack ten. That's not that's not the worst flop I've ever seen. I check called flop, turn got checked. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. So that was a bit of a weird ace seven hand, but pretty standard check raise here. Is that a third table? Yeah, I have a third table running, but I didn't record it for this video. That video will be a separate, a separate thing if you guys ever want to watch a tournament. We can, I've got a, I've got like a three-hour long tournament video, so that's that's something else. So yes, we're going with the nuts. Ace ten, huh? All right. So we successfully dodged the ace and the ten. So we ship that pot. So we started each table with $25, so we've heated it up pretty nicely so far. Up about $16 on the left and up about $40 on the right. Thank you, Stuart Little. This is it. This is it. This is the new home. This is the new casting environment for, for Team Run It Up. 
That that is it. Exactly. Why? <laughs> Why bother rivering the nuts when you can just flop it? Exactly. Exactly. That is a great attitude. I love it. Hello, Dev. I am doing fantastic today. How are you? It's great. It's 2 p.m. Las Vegas. It's always bright and sunny. I don't even have to look. I know it's bright and sunny because we live in the middle of the desert. It's wonderful. Did I ever get to see Solomon? No! Oh my god, that's a great story though. And thank you for bringing that up, James T555. <laughs> Shout outs to James T. There's a hotel that I am quite a big fan of in LA, and there's a guy that works there who might be the nicest guy that I've ever met in my life. And the last time I saw him, I was with a friend, and I talked to this guy several times. He's super nice, like one of the kindest guys you could ever met in my life. He's a bald, skinny, tall black guy. And um, but the last time that I saw him, he he gracefully like reached out, touched my cheek, and was like, "Oh, you're as nice as popcorn." <laughs> With my friend with me, so you know I'm not making it up. That would be James T. Uh, in this bot, I called preflop because, you know, hey, why not? We have the button. And then he bet this flop, and I was like, alright, well, I guess we have to call a flop. And now at this point, we have a flush draw and a pair, and I'm close to folding, but I think our hand is just too good. River Ace Diamonds, uh, I think it's a good, a good card for us. There's not too many hands that he really should beat us with. He has to have, like, Ace Jack with the Jack of Diamonds, Ace Queen with the Queen of Diamonds, King Jack with the Jack of Diamonds, King Queen with the Queen of Diamonds, 10 Queen, 10 Jack, both with the Diamond, probably. Or he has to have, like, I mean, for us to be beat, like, there's only a, a couple hands he can have that really make sense. Like, what other hands does, does he have? He has, like, King 9 with the 9 of Diamonds? I mean, maybe? So, ultimately, I think given the price that we're getting here, I think it's a close call, but we should be calling. And he has Stone Bluff, which I actually don't mind his bluff, because it, it probably works a decent amount of the time, but not this time. <laughs> so, we end up shipping that over there. Uh, yes, yes! That is it. <laughs> Run it up! Trust me, trust me, we want, trust me, we're working very hard in Ultimate Poker to get online poker back to, back to as many places as we can get it in America. Trust me. Trust me, we are doing it. Uh, <laughs> flopping the nuts, preserving the nuts is just being thorough. Yes, that is a excellent, excellent attitude, sir. Alright, so we've done pretty well so far. So we started today with 160 bucks and we've already won 40 on each table. <laughs> So that's pretty pretty solid heater. What? Yeah, that's true. That is true. We deserve it. That is true. That is it. I've also childproofed it because now I don't have to use the pin. <laughs> that's it. It doesn't look as good in the black, but you know what? Hey, I'll have to get like a sheriff hat to go with it. That's right. I call up my 8-9 offsuit four streets in a row. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, do I have a, de decent, a different strategy for each table? Uh, I do to some degree because like we know some things about some opponents on the right table. Like we know that Jammin on face guy was able to do that post raise thing. So I think he's capable of like attempting to to test us. Uh, on the left table, we know I've been grinding was a fan. Uh, so we at least know that he is somewhat rel He has to have somewhat of poker knowledge if he's aware of the videos. And I don't think anybody else said anything to me on the left table, but uh, but yeah. So, uh, the Sunday Major, I believe, is a $200 buy-in. I think the guarantee is a 20k right now, but uh, I'm not 100% on that, to be honest with you. We're actually, uh, uh, we're working on the software, don't worry. You'll, you'll hear stuff about the software sooner, sooner than you think. I don't know, I don't know if I can say yet. I'm only the sheriff, you know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not management, I'm only the sheriff. So, uh, I can't quite, can't quite tell you too much about the software changes, but... There, trust me. Every single person on Ultimate Poker is is aware of the shortfalls of the software and is working their asses off to make it to make it better. Trust me. No one no one accepts mediocrity around Ultimate Poker. We we don't do that over here. We're a uh, we're a, we want to be the best, and we know there's there's a lot of work to be done. So that comes from officially from the sheriff. So <laughs> no worries there. I decided to raise here, and I actually think this is actually something we talk about in depth. If I ever was going to do like an in-depth strategy strategy video again, which I will probably never do, this <laughs> this is actually a very interesting raise, I think. 
because when he limps, I've been I've seen him limp a bunch of times now. I kind of want to just I think if I raise, let's say theoretically, if I raise and he calls, I think we win the pot like two thirds of the time in position. He just check folds two thirds of the time, maybe even a little bit more than that. Maybe we win the pot like 70% of the time. So making it 150, I think gets the pot heads up. We get 75 cents in overlay. Uh, I think I think it's a, a an interesting sizing though, making it 150 instead of bigger. On the left table, as you can see, I've drilled the nine of spades on the turn here. So uh, uh, I think I just bet flop. I bet I raised pre-flop, and I think I just bet the flop, though. I don't think I did anything too wild. I decided to bet on the left table here twice. I think maybe I'll get this player to fold. Oops, I forgot that we once again have two players now. Sorry about that. Our old friend Scorpion808 has rejoined the table. Um... So yeah, I just bet twice on the left table. I bet twice on the right table. I thought he would, if I if you remember correctly, this Scorpion 808 guy we've played with before, and he was a little bit. Um, I felt I felt like he, we had played with him before, and he was like reasonable enough. He wasn't like a normal guy that was just like sticking around. Like I felt like he was the type that we had seen him like react reasonably to two bets. So I felt like it was worth worth a shot. I defend a four suited here in the small blind in the, or in the big blind rather in the left table. Uh, not like the best flop or the worst flop, but I mean, I'm probably behind against two players here if it goes like bet call. Uh, I actually think it does go bet call, and then I have like a weird decision that, and... So yeah, he bets two... What is this song? Chambermaid Swing. I think, uh... I think I'm gonna change the song. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I use XSplit. I think I end up calling here on the left, but I don't really particularly love it, but I think calling is fine. Uh, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I don't really like being the caller in this situation because I'm very likely not, I very, I very likely don't have the best hand, and it's very hard to win by calling before the river. I mean, not necessarily very hard to win, but it's fairly difficult to win. This sheriff badge is not, not coming up too clearly on this uh, black on, black thing going on. But uh, I decided to just fold now on the turn, of course, because I think that is fine. So, let's. Nice. Look at that. All right. So I raised seven seven nine suit on the right table over here. I think we can get away with one one bet. You know, I, I think I wouldn't always bet here, but I decided to bet now. I can't be can't be too bad. Got any spaghetti western music? Uh, no, I, I I don't have any of that. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, I started this stream 20 minutes ago, and it'll be on Twitch immediately after this is over, and it'll be on YouTube within like uh, an hour or so. I have to do a little bit of editing because like again, like an idiot, I started recording with the mic muted, so I have to fix that. But besides that, um, it'll be pretty, pretty soon. All right, King-10 offsuit here with a call under the gun. I think I can call here. I'm not like loving it by any means, but I think it's close enough to being fine. On the right, I raise two fours under the gun, get called by these two guys, the angry golf ball and <laughs> John Doe, John Doe and the big blind. I bet this flop, which I think is fine. On the turn here, I think it's very close between check calling and uh, check folding against some opponents. Uh, you could argue betting also against some opponents. We turned trips and a flush draw on the left table, but I think it checked around on flop. Um, I think this is really close, and this is so opponent dependent. Like against some opponents, you should almost always be check folding here because they always have you beat. And against some opponents, you can check call. Against some opponents, you can do other things. So I really wasn't sure what to do with this guy. And uh, given the price we had, I thought it was okay to call. And uh, yeah, bink. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we ripped the the old full house on the river. Now at this point, I actually think I might pause the video because I think this is actually a relatively interesting concept. Even though I'm not going to be planning on pausing it too often, I think. It, in this situation comes down to what we think our opponent has because if our opponent has a king or like two tens or a nine or ace high any of those types of hands we want to be betting not checking because those hands are likely going to check back like he hasn't he didn't raise preflop so he doesn't have ace king so he's probably going to check back like maybe he bets king queen but he might check back like king jack and worse so we should be checking here if he has nothing we should be betting if we think he has something so so at some point in this hand, our read went against what we actually did because it didn't. It doesn't make a. We're we're in a weird spot in the river now because we were never really sure we were at in this hand, so our decision isn't really clear. Does that make sense? So, uh, so I think I decided to bet here, and I think betting is correct. I think I bet too much because he might even fold the hand like a uh, nine or or like uh, he'll definitely fold ace high. I think, but I think he'll. He'll for sure fold a nine. He, m I doubt he'd fold a king, but he might for this sizing because it looks so strong. 
Uh, I think I would have preferred to bet like 12 here instead of 1650, but uh, you know, it can't be that big of a difference. I just think this is less than less than ideal. It seems like I play kind of loose. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed, it does seem like that, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, that is that is how I play poker. Gonna raise it up with pocket fives on the left. I think that is fine. Um, yeah, this is live commentary on a pre-recorded session, so obviously that I, I, I can pause it. So given that I can pause it, I think that that is uh, <laughs> that explains that. Betting on the right, and I think it was a limp spot on the left. I this was the hand that I raised pre-flop. It went limp, raise, call, call. I think I can start with a bet here. I decided to bet kind of small though, because I think it's obviously a very connected board. Um, but I think betting once is okay. At least, I can always bet more than once. Ali, we're going to start with a bet once and see what happens. We turn a gut shot and uh, to go with our set draw. So uh, I think that I think that it's close between betting and checking here. But uh, ultimately, I do think betting is better. I think we have a chance of getting him to fold a better hand than ours. Like, imagine if he just has like queen 10 with the queen of clubs. We want that hand to fold. You know, there's a lot of hands we just want to fold if he has two dines with the nine of clubs. Like, I think we put a lot of pressure on him, and we also have a lot of outs to, to improve if uh, if we don't have the best hand or get him to fold immediately. I don't know any of my stats because there's no HUD ultimate poker. So I. Uh, I know I am loose and aggressive. <laughs> that, that is what I can tell you about my stats. So once again, the heater continues, and we river the, uh, straight on the right table, or so it appears. What's my difference in strategy from tournament to cash? There's a lot of difference. I mean, my strategy is very different based on each table that I play at, obviously. You're really supposed to like tweak your strategy based on your opponents anyway, just like ideally speaking, you're supposed to do that. And in, in, in tournaments, your stack sizes are usually deeper. There's more considerations to not going broke, not, not getting yourself into close situations where you might go broke. Uh, so like tournament life all of a sudden matters, whereas in cash, you just want to make the most money possible. Um, like there is a hand even in this video where it was like, uh, guy limps under the gun, I make it $3 in the big blind with air, queen four or something like that, and then he makes it $9. In a tournament, sometimes you would just fold. It's like 100 big blinds. You would just be like, all right, I guess he has it. It's not worth potentially going broke here, blah, blah, blah. But here, I just think it works out. We're risking enough, and he's folding enough that it's fine. So I think it's a good example of tournament strategy versus cash strategy. I decided check raise here on the left table with the flush draw, A, because we're running really hot and people kind of usually give you, it's just like a good thing, we're, we're on a heater, you know, we're check raising with the flush draw, of course we'll get there, right? So I do, uh, I think check raising is fine. Once he re-raises though, I think our hand actually shrivels up considerably because just having a flush draw is not, having a 7 high flush draw against a re-raising range is not exactly what we want. Because think about the hands he's re-raising with, right? He's re-raising with bigger flush draws, sixes, and like over pairs, eventually queen x, I would think, some some queen x's. But since I'm not since I'm not 100% sure exactly what he's raising with, uh, I think folding is just fine. I ended up betting on the right table. I was actually going to give up with the hand, but I decided that maybe we can get him to fold 10-8, queen 10, you know, some better straight draws, and worked out that time. Are people folding top pair medium kicker? Uh, what, what hand are you talking about? J-Bag? j, -bag, j -beige? <laughs> Uh I don't know what that E is doing in there. I'm sorry. I saw J-Bag and was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, apparently not. Hello, I've been streaming for 30 minutes at this point. Yes, yeah, so I kept... I, I, I used the HUD earlier in my career, of course, especially when I was multi-tabling, but I, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of HUDs, generally speaking. Uh, I bet 250 here into like nine dollars. I, I usually I don't always bet this flop, but I I did here as you know we were on a heater. How do you not bet? Um, against Scorpion, I felt like this was more of like a read-based call than a math-based call. I kind of felt that I kind of felt that this player was going to raise with a lot of his draws and then very strong hands. And if he had queens, he'd probably raise pre-flop. Even if he had tens, he might re-raise pre-flop. So he has to have like queen ten, the case two fives. I, I just thought he had king jack and jack nine a lot, and it would go check check a lot on turn. That is a lot of assumptions, and I probably should just fold. Like honestly, I should just fold. But I talked myself into it and decided to call. I didn't really like it too much, but it happens. No, this is not pre-edited. If there's one thing you guys should have learned by now about me is that I don't like editing videos. <laughs> so it's so much work. I don't get it. It's like, difficult. I just want to make videos and talk into a camera. That's all I want to do. 
So Ace is a bad river card for us. We do beat Jack Nine, but that's about it. So I'm probably just check pulling now. It going check check on turn was good for us having the best end, but I think now we just probably don't. So gonna let that one go. Is uh, uh, on the four four hand. Did you think he was floating you and then try to take a pot away in the turn when you check call the pure block for us? Or did you call? Yeah, I think he can also. I think yeah, exactly. That's it. Like I think he is. I think I thought it was likely that he was check calling. Uh, or calling with uh, like ace highs, maybe some like worse hands, stuff like that, and then I can just check off from there. I mean, it's king five five board, not exactly the most connected board, you know, in the world there for for a guy. So I thought I thought it was possible that we had the best end, given the price we were getting and everything else. But uh, like I said, I don't really love that hand either, but I think it's close enough that it's fine. <laughs> I am a great I am a, I, I am a great tipper of the dealer online. Okay. Uh, all these, I, I don't, I don't really ever, uh, smoke and play, unfortunately, no, that's not something that, I don't think I would play too well, to be honest with you. So we call, uh, we blimp here, or, sorry, check in the big blind here with 9-8 offsuit. On the left table, we have pocket fours. Uh, I feel like in this video, I was just in a betting mood, because I, again, could check here reasonably, and decide to bet instead. Uh, I think I should probably just not bet even on this board. I mean, it's close. It's very close. Given that we were checked to, you know, but there are five players in the pot. So I, I think, you know, it's not exactly the, the best situation. We turned an eight over there, which I think probably gives us the best hand. But I'm just planning on check calling now. He checks back, though, and we... Oh, lose. Okay. I thought we won that. Did not win that one there. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. The 101, the 101s are coming. Don't, don't worry, all right? Can you tell us what your day day of day of life consists of now? Uh, <laughs> my day consists of uh, a lot of ultimate poker stuff work. I've been helping them out with trying to get like um, I decided to bluff here. Because I wasn't gonna bluff again, but now I feel like we kind of have to. In the off chance he doesn't have an ace, or maybe he can fold just like a single pair hand. I don't think he folds two pair to us, uh, but I think he folds uh, one pair hands to us, and maybe he folds like you know queen. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of hands you folds, but I thought it was worth a shot, uh, and it didn't work out that time. But, you know, can't be too bad. I don't think we lose that much with that bet. Um, what were we talking about before that? Oh yeah, my day of, my, my average day. Uh, you know, I still play poker, uh, probably at least an average of like once a day, you know, either for videos or something. As a big pot on the right table there, four threes, holding. Um, but you know, I do a lot of work with my poker, help them out with uh, tournament stuff, ideas, like promotions, that kind of stuff. All the YouTube thing takes up a lot of time, obviously, and the the next step for all that, as you guys are seeing, which you'll hear about tomorrow, uh, when we do that announcement, that'll be awesome. So um, we're uh, I do a lot of work for all that stuff, and then I also manage uh, eight 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 or so full time horses for backing. That takes up a lot of time. And uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much the average the average combination. Do I have pets? No, I do not. I'm not. I'm not that kind of person. So in this in this uh, in this hand on the left, it went limp. I raised. And he min re raised, and then we just crushed the flop here. And I'm pretty sure we're just going to be re raising, getting it in. On the right table, I end up calling a, re a three bet with Jack Ten offsuit. And uh, once again, I'm kind of just like feeling my oats a little bit, and I'm just like, all right, we got a three straight, three flush, and two over cards, and we're getting a decent price in position, and we're pretty deep. So I. Ultimately decided to call here, but I don't really like love this. But I was like, hey, why not? Nine is obviously a really awful card. We have to call on the left, of course. We get it in really good against Queen Eight. He turns an eight, though. Uh, yes. I was like, I think I win this. Yeah. So thankfully, we ship that. That fifty-seven dollars is like a quarter of our bankroll or something. So we really need to win these pots. <laughs> Please, we need it. I'm gonna move the letters around. We're gonna change the letters to we need it. <laughs> Um, alright, so, on the right table, I just don't really know if he's folding anything, I mean, like, what, also, like, you know, what do we have that makes sense that we'd bet now, it doesn't make a lot of sense, that 9 just kind of ended our chances of winning this pot, so I just ended up checking, obviously we lose almost always, he actually had 8-6 exhausted though, so I actually think our float was fine, and given, uh, there goes the, there goes the sheriff badge, um, but, uh, I think we actually win that pot more often than not, so it's fine, it's fine. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's fine to, to float there, but uh, didn't work that time. Does the min from the small blind tell me anything? It tells me he probably doesn't have too much. 
Yes, husky, husky nose. You know how much stuff goes into those YouTube videos? The annotations, the editing, the tweaks, the messages, this and that. There's a lot of things, you know? There's a lot. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, what all is managing involved? Uh, what, what all is involved with managing horses? Uh, well, you know, people sometimes some horses like talking hands. Some people never talk hands. Some people want to talk about like what they should play, what they shouldn't play. Some people don't want to talk about any of that stuff. So each different horse is, is different, but regardless of all of those things, they always need money. So <laughs> everyone's like, I need money for this. I need money for that. Make sure we have money online. Make, put up this and everything else. So that is uh, that is pretty much what that life is like. Uh, the other Ultimate Poker Pros are pretty involved. We had a meeting actually a couple days ago with pretty much everybody there talking about some tournament ideas, stuff like that. So that was that was awesome to see. So I would say they're all they're all pretty involved. I mean, uh, you know, some more so than others, but some people are just more busy than others. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just the the truth of it. But I think everybody is pretty involved. You know, uh, most of them don't really play in the. <laughs> don't really play in the same games I mean the same tournaments once in a while but those are like huge fields and I don't think most of them are even like aware of each other to be honest with you uh, with you uh, <laughs> yes that was some the queen at hand is something uh, <laughs> as a member of team run it up do you need my contact info to send me part of the winnings yes please please send me that on twitter or facebook at Jason Somerville on Twitter, J Carver Poker on Facebook, or Instagram. I Instagrammed a picture of the new set last night. If you guys saw that, eventually I posted it on Facebook too. But Instagram.com, J Carver Poker. If you're an Instagram fan, I've been Instagramming more and more these days because I've been really enjoying it. I feel like for for a while I really like fought it. I was like, what's the point? You can just tweet pictures, and then I was like, oh, we get to do like a photo thing. It's all like the coolest of cool pictures. So now I'm an Instagram fan. I've been converted. After all the years of resisting, now I finally am an Instagram fan. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do even better than that. How about I make a hour-long video about my start in poker? <laughs> you can check that out on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash jcarverpoker. It's uh, Life of Times, Life End Times of J. Carver. I took the, the Jay-Z reference because I've been in the Jay-Z mood the last like few months. So Life and Times of Jay Carver, check that out. I talk about how I got started in poker, my how I initially ran it up in poker, uh, my first time playing live, my first tournament win, my all a bunch of cool stuff. So And I still have more of that coming this week. So if you've been enjoying those, let me know and uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing more of them sometime soon. Do I play poker as a form of income anymore? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, that's the primary point of playing poker. I play poker for money and pleasure, obviously. But I don't need to do it to like rely on it for income. I don't need. I don't. You know, nor do I rely on ultimate poker for income either. Thankfully, at this point in my life, I don't. I, I'm not like forced to grind. You know, I mean, that is what allows me to make YouTube videos about my poker strategy. Uh, obviously, uh, if I if I was really like relying on on playing poker for a living. I probably wouldn't be doing videos like this where I'm like a little bit more open with my strategy, but you know, I don't think it affects me too much because at this point I'm, I've got my eye on other projects and I feel like I'll always play poker and I really do love poker and I'll, I'll always be involved to, in poker for sure, but uh, I don't need it anymore to like, you know, live obviously, so. Ah, Zork, my magic friend. Yes, I, uh, I, I've I been playing a little bit in 14, but I didn't actually make that bet that I was talking about. I'm debating bluffing on the left table, but I think I just give up. I just think there's too many... I think he just calls us too much. I don't think he folds a queen. Probably doesn't even fold a 10, so I just gave up. Uh, when's the J. Carver subscription? Subs only for all? You'll have to stay tuned, sir. You'll have to stay tuned to that. You have to be in Nevada, though, which is the one, the one thing. For now, at least. You're going to have to be in Nevada. Sorry, Nevada. I don't understand. People really are upset about that when I go like Nevada. That's just how I always said it. That's how, you know, no one ever corrected me for 26 years. I'm working on it, you know? <laughs> yes. It's all about the segues and the plugs. That is it. Uh, I I haven't played League of Legends in a while because I was away for a week and I don't really like playing on a, a laptop type of situation. The internet wasn't even very good. Pagadaces. 
Uh, so, no, there's no delay. This is uh, pre-recorded poker with live commentary. So I can answer your questions without a delay, and we get to watch some, uh, tr some, some poker from yesterday. I started at each table with $25, so I've done pretty, pretty... <laughs> yes, I didn't mean to do it. I did it accidentally. Pretty good here today on Team Run It Up. All right, let's get through some of these questions. Would I say I was lucky to get this much money, or was it skill? I got lucky so many times in my career, you have no idea. Like, I mean, if you go back and listen to my, like, Run It Up series, I got so lucky. You know, like, so many of my, like, that original, like, $5 free roll win, I could have got unlucky very easily and just lost it. There are so many times in my career that if you had applied, like, a nine-month downswing to it, I would have just quit and done something else. Or even just, like, a horrendous short-term downswing, I probably would have just quit. But uh, thankfully, I was lucky to not have any of that happen. I was lucky to have super, super successful poker friends that were like really like the geniuses of my generation that were that shared with me like their insights. And then I met Daniel Negreanu, who was ended up being like a mentor, one of my best friends. We have a full house, by the way, and I've just bet, bet, and I think now we just clearly have to just shove. He has 22 behind, 36 in the pot. I think that's pretty normal. Uh, we have a6 on the left, so we got bottom per. Shoving on the left, betting on the right, I think that sounds about right. But yeah, I got so lucky so many times in my in my career just with like... Uh, imagine if you could change three river cards. So like, if you change it so that I didn't win a bracelet in 2011, so just one hand just goes differently. It was like three hand, three thousand... Uh, it was a three day, three thousand person tournament. Imagine if one hand goes worse for me and I don't win that, so then I have 500,000 in earnings less. <laughs> like, there are so many different things that could just be different. And I, I, I didn't really believe that he had too much here. I mean, I remember this distinctly because I was like, what do you have that would call call pre, call flop, and then bet $2 on this turn? It just didn't make a lot of sense to me that he was very strong, so I thought we could get away with a big check raise here. I didn't want to check raise too small because I thought there was a chance he had a hand like... 9, 10, I didn't want him just calling with a hand like that, because I wasn't really too confident, and I didn't want to fire twice, so I really wanted to just end the hand right then and there, and it worked out for us, which is nice. <laughs> well, because you're in fucking Abu Dhabi, you know? <laughs> what can I say? You're, if you're going to be in Dubai, it's not it's not the best stream time, you know? You're going to make some sacrifices to be a part of the team, Rory McDonald. You know? That's it. If you're going to be the... If you're gonna be the fan that I consistently shout out to, you're gonna have to make some some sacrifices, you know? I don't know what to tell you. My will and my will and grace buddy over there. <laughs> what do I think are the differences right now between low, mid, and high stakes games? Uh I don't know. I don't play enough low and mid high I don't play enough live poker to really tell you. And also that's going to change so much based on the area of the world that you're in. Like it changes, I'm sure, if you're in East Coast, West Coast, Vegas, Canada, Europe, you know, like the answer will be very different everywhere. Even like site to site, like Ultimate Poker will be very different than other sites, you know, like in terms of just what the what the general average game is like. Um, so I really think it kind of depends on, on a lot of things. Um, if you have more specific questions, I'm happy to answer it. But I think this is, I think the best answer is just, it depends a lot. So on the left table here, it was a limp pot preflop and he check raised. I think our hand is too good to fold. If we had a hand like deuce four, like just like bottom pair, nothing, I'd probably fold to a check raise because our hand is just too bad. But given that we have a gut shot and top purr, I thought that it was, uh, it was fine to peel one. Um, when he bets twice, I'm a little concerned, obviously. Remember, it's a limped pot pre, though, so we might have some, like, two-pair combos, but again, I think our hand is just a little bit too strong. Given that uh, we have to call a 650 to win $19, I think that was, like, the 3D action. That's it. <laughs> uh, I decided to call. Uh, not loving it, though. If he checks, I'm just happy to check and see a showdown. On the right table, I think I opened under the gun here, and then I bet flop. Something like that. Uh, do you ever play a live cash here in Vegas? From our friend Sky Joe, the the zombie the zombie avatar friend. Uh, the, uh, yeah, every once in a while I play it like uh, Bellagio or whatever. Not too often because the games don't run often big enough that I can also get into. <laughs> so it's a combination of the games being too small plus uh, sometimes being hard to get into them. So it's a combination of those two things. I will remember your name, sir. Gaspo Macho. Oh, let's see. Can we make it to 10k? Are we throwing a party? Uh, yes. There will be a there will be a bash. Are you crazy? There will be a party at Red Rock. It will be unbelievable. 
it'll be a real thing. How could we not, you know? Team ran it up. That is it. Uh, I think I'm going to re-raise pocket 8 tier pre-flop. I mean, uh, I think it's fine in position. We're pretty deep. We have the best hand more often than not. I think we're just, like, punishing him a little bit. So, I think that is that is fine. Oh, a lot of questions here that I haven't got to yet. Sorry about that. How do you decide how long to play each session, especially live? I think you should play as long as it's a profitable spot for you. So if it's not a profitable spot for you, if you are upset, tilted, thinking about other things, if you are worried you are going to win and thus playing more conser or worried that you're going to lose and thus playing more conservatively, like if you're, uh, that's a form of tilt actually. If you're if you're in a in a spot where you don't feel comfortable, you're not happy, you're not enjoying yourself, like you're not, it's not profitable. A, a bad bad players have left. Good players have joined, especially on your left. I think there are. Plenty, there's all plenty of reasons to quit. You should never be, it's it's almost never going to be a mistake to quit too early. If you ever read Tommy Angelo's books or listen to his like, his um, his videos, which I think are on Deuces Cracked, um, but maybe they're just free now or something, I don't know. But uh, he talks a lot about quitting and when you should quit uh, on, the, on the poker felt and all that stuff. So you should, on the poker felt, yes, that's right. Um, so I think you should check that out if you're interested more in terms of like quitting and stuff like that. Tommy Angelo is great with all that stuff. No, no, no. I <laughs> uh, that is funny. Serious question. How do you know when you're becoming a DJ and not just on a downswing? Well, I think that's got to do with your attitude, honestly, more than just that. Uh, you know, if you're losing a lot and just keep depositing and losing, and at some point you have to become comfortable with the fact that you're a recreational player who is just donating, you know, to poker, which is fine. Cause think about how I many. Think about like Candy Crush Saga and all those other silly Facebook games that people pay hundreds of dollars for and have no chance of return. So. If, you, if you're okay with that, then I think it's totally fine. You can deposit $100 every month or whatever, and then you try to win. If you lose, whatever. If you win, it's great. So I, I think if you take that mindset, then it's fine, and you can be a, a reasonable, you know, a fiscally reasonable degenerate is still fine, you know? If you're worried about, you know, being a professional and you're worried whether or not you're on a downswing or, you know, you're just spewing or whatever, it's all about attitude and perspective and how you approach poker, I think. I think that's, that is just that. All right, let's see. Is John Ribeiro really broke? I've got I've got some opinions on on that. I I probably shouldn't share them though, because he's done a very good job of, you know, making himself a character. That's for sure. But uh, I I, I like John Ribeiro. He he has been kind to me in several se se several settings, and then bizarrely non-communicative in others. So I don't really know. John Robert's life, to be honest with you, but I like him. I'm a fan, I, even though I unfollowed him on Twitter because I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it anymore. But <laughs> I couldn't take all the random pictures of him, all the badly badly lit photos of him in nightclubs with random women. I couldn't take it. I had to unfollow him. But uh, but yeah. Uh, well, I don't have to. You shouldn't be balancing anything at 25 cent, 50 cent. You know, like I'm just max 101 dealer. There we go for the fans over there uh, I, I don't really balance it because what's the point why balance it's 25 cent 50 cent you know you're supposed to play max exploitatively right we're just trying to thank you Bob Sapp <laughs> um, yeah we're just trying to play max exploitatively here we're not trying to be balanced uh, so I make it 101 he raises the three dollars and because we have a penny long a penny off I have to call you know so I feel like we're priced in math wise it's pretty close so yeah me and Rory and I have had several conversations about how to meet women, so... Uh, <laughs> huh? Clearly, if you guys ever want to hear Jay Carver's, Jay Carver's love tips, we'll have to do that for, for an episode. Uh, it's a lucky hat. No, I've just always wore black Nike hats all my life since I was like seven. So I just, at this point, why should I change it now? Once in a while I change up the hat, but... Alright, a lot of questions that we missed. Did I ever play Dragon Age? Yeah, I'm a big fan of games like that, although I haven't had the time to play it too much lately. On the right table here, I'm just going to end up check calling. I raise called pre, check called flop. Got to check call this as well. Don't have a choice. Hand is too good. Uh, if a river comes ace or a king, we're not going to love it, but everything else we're probably going to end up calling. On a six, I'm preparing to check call, um, but uh, definitely starting with a check. Doesn't make any sense to bet, obviously. Okay, let's see. Any other questions that I missed?
<laughs> uh, so many good questions. I I love this. Uh, I love this. So yeah, ghost check check, which is nice. Yes, Chomper Bear does a lot of drinking. It seems that is for sure. I'm sorry to hear that. Aces cracking. I don't think kings are cracked by aces, by the way. I think it's the other way around. Is how that goes. I make it three dollars here, which is a little bit bigger than I'd normally make it. Once again, this is not balanced like we were just talking about, but I think uh, Scorpion is a little bit of the sticky type. So I set it on my left table here. We're. Uh, I felt. I felt that after we won that ten nine hand, I didn't want to instantly quit and just like take his money. I think. I think actually, very few things at the poker table slightly tilt me more than people who like win money and like instantly sit out it's like come on stick around for a little bit give it a little action you know but uh is poker vt still running i have no idea i think the answer is yes but i'm not 100 percent on that i don't uh, i i'm pretty sure we have officially parted ways several years ago in fact <laughs> so uh i mean i have they i have a lot of fond memories of course but I'm gonna change my Facebook pictures. Don't worry, Rory. I'm fixing it. Don't worry. All right. Fucking Rory McDonald, man. Just can't get enough of this fucking kid. He's just like, <laughs> he's he's always just fucking saying shit. You know? What can you say? All right. Let's see. Get a green screen. I have a cork board now. Who needs a green screen? I have a I have a cork board. Uh, I have two jacks here on the right table. I'm gonna re-raise. I mean, obviously. Uh, I, if either one of these players continued, I would have to con go with it, just because of the fact that this player is also in the pot. If he wasn't in the pot, then it would be like this hand. It, lo it looks like I could be squeezing. So because of that, because I look weaker, I have to go with it here. I just think I'm too strong to do anything besides that. I want to see you with a tan in your next video. Sorry, buddy. There's more likely of chance that there's going to be a unicorn running through this video than there is me being tan. <laughs> that is that is just the truth of that. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Uh, let's see, with these live sessions playing more than 30 minutes? Yeah, well this was an hour, or it will be an hour in about 10 minutes. So, uh, so you know, uh, these live streams will usually be about an hour, but I did record that tournament that I played yesterday, which was like three hours. But, uh, so if you guys ever want to watch, like, if we ever have time to do, like, an extended story time, we'll do a hangout, we'll put a fireplace up, we'll watch some $10 tournament poker, we'll relax, it'll be great. So if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, we'll do that sometime this week. Um, I should be around all week, so this is going to be, like, a pretty sick, pretty sick next couple days of videos. There's a bunch of, like, pretty sweet things on the horizon. Never mind the big announcement. Never mind the big announcement. We have a set now. How cool is this? You know, have we talked about that yet? Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. All right, let's do our first item that I'm going to show you guys on tour here. That is it. This is maybe the coolest thing that I've ever been given. That's right. Who's the video vi visitor contact? Dana White. That's right, baby. That's the boss. <laughs> so I think we raised pre-flop, probably made it 101 because I'm pretty sure that's what I did. And then I bet flop, and here we are. And you know what? Why shouldn't we bet turn? Oh, I don't bet turn. That's weird. I thought I bet turn. <laughs> I do drill it, though. <laughs> So there's that. All right. Well, so he bets, which is very kind of him to bet. <laughs> I do the text commentary from the past. Past Jay Carter thought it was very funny how good I was running. Good to know, right? <laughs> huh? Yeah, just, just fucking drilled it. What do I think about Rampage versus Tito? I think it's a joke, man. I think they, I think they overpriced the pay-per-view. I think they went against what Bellator stands for as a company and has always stood for as a company. They've always said the tournaments, tournaments will make champions, right? That the, that the star of the show is the tournament. That's what the cool thing is about Bellator is that they run these tournaments. And now, after all the years of doing that, Viacom makes them do a pay-per-view, which they've way overpriced to get Tito versus Rampage in a fight. Like what in the world? Who will pay for that? This is the tournament lobby, by the way, that I was playing, and that we will hop in eventually at some point. Um, who wants to pay like forty-five dollars or whatever it was for Tito versus Rampage? Like, you know, you know, Tito was like what, like one in seven in his last eight or something like that. I mean, I'm a Rampage fan. I think Rampage is hilarious. I think he's a great character. And I met Tito, and I actually liked Tito as a person and all that. But t 
Tito, Tito, I mean, man, I, you know, you can't listen to, you know how many times in, the, in his past eight fights Tito has said, oh, I'm healthy, oh, I'm, I'm fine, yeah, I'm healthy, and I'm, I'm gonna, this is a new Tito, and how many times are we gonna fall for it and keep paying for these pay-per-views? I mean, like, in my opinion, I think it's a joke, uh, I think it's a joke, even if they stack the rest of the card with every other star Bellator has, it should have been a spike card, it should have been on spike. It should have been on Spike or should have been like 25 bucks. Like, I've paid for non-UFC pay-per-views pay before. I paid for Affliction back in the day. I pay for Invicta these days still. I think Invicta does a great job with their shows. But uh, this Tito Rampage thing, I just don't like. I can't I can't get behind it. So I race here at two tens against the Limp. And uh, I've been grinding over there, decides to defend. Not the best flop for two tens, but I think I'm still going to try betting once. Uh, I'm calling on the right with Ace High because I got Ace High, bitch. <laughs> what can you do? I have a sign. Uh, ha, I would love to make a shirt like that. I need to make a friend that knows how to make shirts, and then I'll be happy to make shirts that have like you know, like a like a like a power drill on it. That's like let's fucking drill it. I think that would be hilarious. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of videos like that. What can I say? I use XSplit on PC. Yeah, they're gonna make money on it because they're promoting it to wrestling, but you know. Ah, oh, hello. Thank you, sir. Seen every video. First live stream. This is only like my third or fourth live stream. I'm actually blown away. Against the check raise here, I, I, you guys know how often I dislike folding, but I actually think in this case that we'd have to either like re-raise now and kind of like pretend that we have ace-king, or call and then try to put pressure on, but I don't know our opponent at all and our hand is pretty bad. It doesn't really improve too often, so I think I just... Muck it. Would I rather pay to see Bob Sapp fight? No, that is true. However, I would pay to see uh, Bob Sapp and Tito fight Rampage. That's that's a free idea for you, Viacom. If you make that happen instead, that will be it. Uh, any chance I will be the color commentator on Bull Poker Tour with the Brian Dunst? I did one show with Dan and Tony in, uh, I think it was, uh, it was uh, LAPC this year. I did it. It was the one that Paul Klan won. Um, which and Paul Volpe got uh, second, I believe, something like that, or third, or something. So I did that commentary. That was awesome. I, I would love to do that kind of commentary more often. I think that is that is fun. Um, huh. I am super excited about Breaking Bad tonight. I I will be not tweeting or Facebooking for the three hours prior to it because I'm on the West Coast, so I won't let any of you any of you people spoil it for me. <laughs> so I will see you all at like 10 p.m. Pacific time when I come back on the grid. So, so yeah. Do I see fights in Vegas? Yeah, I've seen several fights in Vegas. I've seen several fights across the, across the, uh, just the U.S. actually. My favorite fight ever was probably, oh, well, it's close. I saw, I saw Chael, Chael Silva in Oakland. Chael Silva won in Oakland, which was great. Front row seats, got a high five from Junior Dos Santos the same night. It was unbelievable. After he beat up Roy Nelson, I saw uh, Tim Sylvia versus Randy Couture in Columbus, which was probably one of the greatest moments of my life, to be honest, because I'll, ne I'll never forget it. After uh, Randy Couture knocks down Tim Sylvia with his opening punch, everyone was on their feet, beginning to end, 25 minutes. It was electric, unbelievable atmosphere. The the place was like, up, like the, the, the roar of the crowd, and then Dana straps on... He straps on the belt onto t onto Randy. Randy is like, you know, hands up like this. I'll never, I'll never forget it. Hands up in the air like a champion. And uh, Joe goes to him, does his thing. Like Randy, how do you feel right now? This unbelievable. It, what a moment! You've come out of retirement to win the heavyweight title. What do you have to say for yourself? And he gives Randy the mic, and Randy goes. Not bad for an old man. I will never forget it. I'll never forget it. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. It is unbelievable. What a moment. By the way, a little 101 dealer here going on. Hey, Jimmy, what's up? Ah, oh, my New York friend, right? You're my uh, Syracuse buddy, Jim. That is you. I don't have to make Jimmy friends. Uh, I try to, try to remember. Yes, I have seen it many times, Rory. <laughs> the heater continues, and we just flop the flop the old nuts to the king four of hearts. So, so hey, why not? I'm on a 101 heater over here, so I fire up to 101 on the left. Let's see, did I miss any other questions? Yeah, if they can get Eddie Alvarez to do it, then yes, but um, I'm dubious. So our friend here re-raises, min re-raises, and we have to call with you know any hand, obviously, including this one. Uh, I actually, I remember this head now. I didn't remember it until the flop, and now, now I remember it. 
he bets, and I think we can call, obviously. We could argue raising, but I, I decided to just call, which I think is all right. Trampage and Tito are combined 2-8 and eight in their last 10. Yeah, that is not exactly a $45 main event pay-per-view by that by that metric only. I mean, it's going to be... It's not even like that interesting of a fight, you know? I, I think if you took... If you said you have Rampage and you were going to put him against someone that was out of the UFC, surely there is someone that's an interesting matchup for Rampage in, in Bellator or someone. I can't really name anyone on the top of my head that's better than Tito, but there has to be someone that's more interesting than Tito. And put it on Spike. Just put Rampage versus anyone on Spike. It'll be great. You know? Any, any of those. So I ended up betting this turn thinking he would fold a bunch of his hands, but he didn't. And I think the Ace is one of those few river cards that I don't want to bluff. There are some I'm going to bluff, there are some I'm not going to bluff, and I think Ace is one of them I'm not going to bluff. So I think I just give up. <laughs> I think a 50-gallon can with a fire would be a cool background. <laughs> I, I thought about trying to put some sort of like a fake, weird fireplace, but uh, do we have that packaging somewhere? Let me see if... You threw it out. <laughs> I, we were at we were at a store when I was buying some of this stuff, and uh, there's a like a Halloween package, and it said, I, I have to find it online or something. There was a Halloween packaging, and it said, um, oh, it's like beware, do not enter. Yeah, and then underneath it was a fireplace, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. It's like a plastic like layout type of thing. I was like, awesome. I'll just cut the we are. You threw out that that thing too. Let me give me that. That's funny. <laughs> and uh, I, so I thought I was gonna just cut out the the bottom part and just have a fireplace. And instead, upon upon unraveling upon unraveling the packaging, just just toss me that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is this is all that came with it. This is it. How? <laughs> uh, this is what I got. I thought I was buying a fireplace piece of plastic mat, and in fact, it was. <laughs> it's some like awful horrible Halloween decoration that I'll never use no fireplace there although I could burn that that is about as close as a fireplace as that gets uh, so yeah when's the last time I got so drunk I don't I can't remember I don't drink bud I don't drink I, I don't drink so it's uh, it, uh, not too often to be honest with you I had two drinks last week though that was about it so yeah I love the UFC I I would acknowledge your name except for the fact that I don't really know how to read it. Giles. All right. That's what I went with. <laughs> Sorry, there's numbers and skinny things and, you know, I don't know what to say. Binghamton. I was close. I was close. All right. So that was the end of this video. Let me figure out what we won this video because I think you guys would like to hear that. So we were in for... We have 51, 57, 51, and... 57.51 and 116.44 minus 50. So we won $123 today on Run It Up. What did we start with today? Oh, $160.57. So that is what we've done today, boys. If that's not running it up, I don't know what is. So next time we'll we'll re uh, we'll have the board be rewritten. That is something. Look at this. Look at this. Two. Look at that. 284.52. Alright, I'll answer some questions and then we'll we'll wrap this up here. This goes. Alright. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. I'll answer any more questions and then we're gonna wrap it up. Love the vids. Thank you, Vestax. I appreciate that. That is awesome. It's great that you guys love them because I've been loving making them. So it's a very nice thing we've got going on here. Am I going to the upcoming UFC cards? I might go to Boston, but that would require leaving in the next like five days, and I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, so the next one I'm probably going to go to will be maybe GS. Oh, Toronto. I'm going to be in Toronto. I think. I think I'm going to go to Toronto for that UFC card. So I will be. I will be there. Look at the bankroll. How good is that? That is awesome. 284.52. Oh wait, actually that's not 100% accurate because I lost $13 in other places. So it's actually going to be... I need that eraser over here at some point. Oh, there it is. Uh, yes, there we go. Yeah, it's 271 because I played that $10 tournament also. 
and uh, lost three dollars at an earlier table. So, two seventy one fifty two. Run up number seventeen is on Twitch. You can uh, you can't miss it. If you can't find it, tweet me at Jason Somerville and I will tweet you the YouTube link. There's a secret YouTube link that I just reposted it, but uh, the first minute of audio doesn't work. So, all right, let's see. Let us see. Any thoughts on the main event final table? Any predictions? Uh, I haven't really researched it because I haven't done any work on it this year. Uh, like, like last year, I could have told you every single thing about that main event final table. I could tell you where they're from. I probably could still tell you every chip count that everybody had the final table. But uh, yeah, this year, I, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I obviously have a couple friends there. David Benefield is a good friend. Uh, a friend. Good friend is too strong. But I'm friendly with David Benefield. I think he's an awesome guy and a great player. Big fan of his for years now. And uh, JC, JC Tran is obviously the sickest of the sickest. I mean, he's, he's really, really good. Been around for a long time. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Heartland Poker Tour, uh, I've got mixed feelings on what they do, but I think as a tour, they do a great job. They take their show to a bunch of like local places, give people a chance to play for big money in a local area. Like, I, I think generally I, I like what they've done with the place. And this uh, Poker Night in America thing, I think, is going to be a decent, uh, not necessarily replacement, obviously, but it'll be a decent, you know, um, I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a, a very good concept and will be a, a decent show, if not better than that. So, heading back to Turning Stone, nice. Enjoy that. That should be fun. All right. I think yes. Running it up is a lot more fun when you run like God. That is true. Yeah, we were in for twenty bucks, twenty five bucks on each. So we did some work today. That is for sure. Again, I'm making it one video a day. I'll be making one video a day for sure for a while, uh, but I'm not necessarily going to make run-it-up videos every day. There'll be uh, something different maybe some days. Some days will be like story time. Some days will be like this. Some days will be live. Some days will be... So we're going to mix it up and kind of see. We'll keep it fresh every day, but we'll be doing a lot more run-it-up this particular week. So... All right, I think that is pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys watching and hanging out with me. It's been awesome doing this stuff. You know, you guys supporting this uh, this streaming thing has been awesome. I really appreciate that. We'll be back with more tomorrow. We're going to talk a little bit more about this, the little set we've got going on here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, back with more tomorrow. Don't forget to follow me here on YouTube at uh, Jake Carter Poker there. And, uh, oh, yeah, Twitter, at Jason Somerville, as always. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.